fourth generation guys, the Lexus RX gets smarter, cleverer and slightly bigger. It's the large luxury SUV that pioneered hybrid power and continues to use that technology as part of a more relaxed ownership experience. For target buyers, there's nothing quite like it. Back at the turn of the century, Lexus became one of the first premium brands to enter the luxury SUV segment, offering an RX model that became even more unique in Mark II model guys when in 2005 it pioneered hybrid power in this sector. Buyers approved and over three generations, more than 2.2 million RXs found satisfied owners. Most of these sales though were in the US market this car was primarily designed for. Now it needs to have wide repeal in Europe and this fourth generation version has been tasked with delivering just that. If ever a category of car cried out for a more efficient means of forward motion, then it's the large luxury SUV. Traditionally, for most buyers, such a vehicle has only been viable to own when equipped with a diesel engine, but even that attracts quite a bottom line running cost penalty. Hence the appeal of hybrid power, something you'd have thought would now be commonplace in the segment. Not so. Belatedly, Volvo and the German premium brands have, over the last few years, begun to offer this technology in their luxury SUVs, but only in pricey plug-in form. If you can't stretch to that, and you want a car in this class, well, then you've broadly the choice of a noisy, potentially planet-polluting diesel or this RX. So you can see why this Lexus sells then. A package that would have been even more successful, in Europe at least, had earlier versions been a touch more spacious and a little more dynamic to drive. The Japanese brand tells us that this fourth generation model is both of these things, at the same time also offering extra technology, stronger standards of safety, even more luxury and much sharper styling. Its hybrid powertrain has been revised too, although not in the kind of fundamental way that could have incorporated plug-in technology or more frugal diesel electric power. Lexus doesn't like diesels, but it's not averse to offering RX customers the option of a more conventional engine this time around, hence the availability of a minority interest petrol turbo RX 200 T derivative to sell alongside the more significant RX 450H hybrid model that we're going to look at here. Overall, things sound pretty promising. Time to put this car to the test. So, what's it like? Well, to begin with, uh, we're going to assume that you want an RX of the hybrid variety. 90% of buyers do. If that's the case, well, then things are utterly laid back from the start. You get in, luxuriate in the beautiful leather seats and enjoy the commanding SUV style driving position before pressing the starter button to be greeted by, well, nothing. The engine's running, true enough, it's just that at this point it's doing so silently under battery power alone. If you've a gentle right foot, that's all it will continue to use for the first couple of minutes of any journey at speeds of up to 30 miles an hour before the 3.5 litre V6 petrol engine kicks in, controlled via a belt-driven CVT auto gearbox with six virtual ratios. But before I go any further, perhaps it's time for a recap on hybrid technology. In case you're still unfamiliar with it, essentially this is a method of power that uses a combination of an internal combustion engine and electric motors. The petrol unit in question here is the V6 I just mentioned, and it's supplemented by two electric motors, one located on each axle. The first 165 brake horsepower unit sits on the front axle, driving the front wheels, and another smaller motor um, at the rear contributes a further 68 brake horsepower and is thus able, somewhat nominally, to make this Lexus into a four-wheel drive car, although one with a very pronounced frontward power bias. 
Like all Lexus and Toyota hybrids, this car can be driven in three ways. By the electric motors only, as it is from start off for up to 1.2 miles, uh, with just the engine if you're giving it full throttle, or more usually with a combination of both. Uh, during deceleration and under braking, the engine switches off and both electric motors act as high output generators, recovering kinetic energy that automatically recharges the batteries for the next time the hybrid system is able to switch back into electric only mode. It all sounds very promising, if not as sophisticated as the technology that rival plug-in hybrid powered large luxury SUV rivals use. These cars, pricier models like BMW's X5 xDrive 40e, uh, the Mercedes GLE 500e, Volvo's XC90 T8 twin engine and Audi's Q7 e-tron feature higher tech lithium ion batteries that can be connected up to the mains to enable up to 25 miles of all electric progress before the engine cuts in. Lexus declines to copy that approach here, doubting that many potential RX buyers will want to pay the significant premium that accompanies plug-in progress. Instead, the Japanese brand has contented itself with refinements to the previous RX model's full hybrid setup, these giving the engine a slightly more urgent note and increasing total system output from 295 to 308 brake horsepower, enough to take this 2.1-ton SUV from rest to 60 in 7.7 .7 seconds on the way to 124 miles an hour, which is comparable to the kind of performance you get from a conventionally engined 3-litre diesel SUV. SUV in this class. Uh, bear in mind though that there's nothing like as much torque, uh, as much pulling power as you get from one of those. This RX model's 350 newton meter figure is 70 to 80 percent less than rival V6 diesels can manage, but nevertheless, it's still enough to allow owners to pull a brake trailer of two tons in weight, which will probably be quite sufficient. Refinement is outstanding, even when the engine's going, but then RXs were always quiet. Especially, of course, when being driven solely by their electric motors. I mentioned earlier that from rest, the car will automatically try to run on electric power alone for a distance of no more than about a mile. Well, you can manually activate that kind of milk float motion for the short distance that it'll last by pressing this EV button near to the gear stuck. On mainstream models, this is one of four drive mode select settings on offer. The other being selectable via this circular dial on the center console. You'll leave it in normal for most of the time, or possibly eco, which tweaks the drive systems for more fuel efficient progress. When the road opens up though, well, you might want to ramp things up a bit. And to help with that, mainstream models get a single sport mode that delivers sharper throttle response and acceleration while adding weight to the steering. You can see why the Lexus engineers felt they needed to add such a setting. After all, this car has never really been seen as a particularly dynamic choice in this segment, and it still isn't. But at least selecting sport makes your progress feel, well, just a little less lethargic. True, ultimate grip is still unremarkable and the electric power steering still lacks feel, but at least a response from the helm is a little more immediate and the car responds more instantly to the throttle as the VDIM Vehicle Dynamics Integrated Management Setup controls and distributes power from the complex drive system. With pricier F Sport and Premier trim levels, Lexus has tried to go further still, adding in an adaptive variable suspension system that continually tweaks the ride to suit the road that you're on. Thanks to this extra dynamic capability, these top variants replace that drive mode select system sport setting with two more focus modes, Sport S, which gives you even sharper acceleration, and Sport S Plus, which adds much firmer steering along with stiffer suspension for flatter cornering. It does make a difference, but the penalty is the kind of firmer ride that many typical RX customers simply won't want. Ultimately, whatever buttons you press, this Lexus is never really going to be a rival for more dynamically orientated segment competitors like BMW's X5. Its priorities lie elsewhere. What the brand has tried to do this time around, though, is to make it into a car you'd be a lot more confident in when the need arises to get a move on. Say, if you're late for a meeting with a cross-country trip to complete. Hence the tweaks made to the electric power steering, supposed to make it feel uh, more responsive, and the changes made to the suspension, supposed to reduce body roll. 
To be frank, the improvements delivered by these dynamic enhancements are marginal. So as before, the RX feels a little out of sorts if you start to throw it around, not helped by the fact that it feels a big car on narrow roads. You're not really encouraged to drive it like that anyway. The suspension, so good at low urban speeds or at a motorway cruise, starts to lose its composure, crashing through bumps when you're pressing on. And if you accelerate hard, the whole process is accompanied by soaring revs from the CVT auto gearbox as it hunts for the next virtual ratio. Better to settle back and keep the car in its broad, calm, luxurious comfort zone at which point you remember again just why you liked it in the first place. We should mention, by the way, that this time around you don't have to have a hybrid engine in your RX. Aware that a minority of potential customers might want a more conventional power plant, Lexus also offers an RX 200T variant that borrows the 235 brake horsepower 2.0-litre petrol turbo engine that's used in the brand's smaller NX SUV. To be frank, we can't really see why you'd choose it. The engine's willing enough, driving via the ordinary mechanical six-speed auto gearbox that's supplied as standard and making 62 miles an hour in just over nine seconds en route to 124 miles an hour. In practice, though, it can feel a touch overwhelmed by the sheer size of the car. And of course, the efficiency figures are way off those of this RX 450h variant. The entry-level RX 200T S derivative comes only with front-wheel drive, but plusher versions are four-wheel driven, the usual system whereby torque is fed to the rear wheels only when a lack of traction demands it. As for this RX 450h hybrid, well, all variants, as I said earlier, theoretically can drive through all four wheels thanks to the electric motors powering both axles. In practice, though, the rear motor is set to power the rear wheels only when the fronts really can't cope. The rest of the time, it acts as a generator to charge the battery when the vehicle is in regenerative brake mode. Now, if you've gathered from that little technical explanation that this RX really isn't suited to heavy off-road work, then you'd be absolutely right. Still, the stats that matter here aren't actually that bad. A ride height of 195 millimetres translates on the rough stuff into an approach angle of 16.5 degrees and a departure angle of 24 degrees. We can't imagine anyone ever putting these figures to the test, but we reckon that during the winter months, most owners will regularly appreciate this car's prowess powering through icy mornings and muddy car parks. It knows its market. At a stroke, this fourth-generation RX makes its predecessors look very ordinary indeed. Its sharp, sculpted shape, um, echoing the Japanese maker's L finesse styling approach, first used on the company's other luxury SUV, the slightly smaller but strikingly handsome NX model. It's an absolute riot of contrasting angles, swage lines and details, all competing for your attention. A combination that has absolutely no right to work, but somehow just does. All of that disguises the fact that this is a slightly larger car than its predecessor, although not large enough to offer the three seating rows that you'll find in some rivals. Brand followers will most easily recognise this Mark IV Model RX by its smarter front end, incorporating the signature chrome-framed spindle-shaped front grille that's a central element in current Lexus design. It's flanked by a whole series of origami-sharp folds and creases that surround the LED fog lamps. And these are positioned below a pair of piercing LED headlamps that, on this top model, feature adaptive high-beam anti-dazzle technology, so you'll never need to dip them. Move to the side and the aesthetics are those of the fashionable, trendy crossover the designers were briefed to deliver. You certainly won't be left with the illusion that this is any kind of capably practical SUV. Purposeful, athletic looks are characterised by sharply tapering front and rear wing flares that add a bit of muscle to a profile largely defined by this pronounced crease that flows back from the spindle grille into the front door handle. The kink in the bottom of the rear doors that draws your eye to the hybrid badge is another nice styling touch, as is the swept-back shape of these rear C-pillars. It's all enough to distract the eye away from this Mark IV model's larger dimensions that see an extra 120 millimetres added to the length and 10 millimetres more added to the width. At the rear, there's more beautiful detailing. 
Extra wide LED light clusters have aero stabilizing fins and use eye catching sequential LED indicators, while a sleeker spoiler stretches across the width of the tailgate window. Uh, further down, this diffuser beneath the bumper smoothly draws airflow from beneath the vehicle and plays its part in the sleek 0.33 CD drag coefficient. <sighs> All this being the case, it would have been somewhat disappointing if on the inside Lexus had served us something more conventional. Fortunately, it hasn't done. Behind the wheel, the distinctively styled interior delivers a driver-centric feel that's refreshingly different from the expensively crafted SUV simplicity served up by rival German brands. This cabin is exquisitely trimmed too, but somehow in a more characterful way with a lovely central analog clock and leather that's hand stitched on each RX by a team of 17 Lexus Takumi craftspeople to achieve its flawless finish. This top premier model feels especially nice with super soft semi aniline leather and this polished laser etched wood trim by the gear lever that's fashioned by the same people responsible for the panelling on Yamaha's grand pianos. The result is a really premium feel that characterises Lexus's growing confidence as a car maker. Even the flat screen infotainment display has been built into the dash without the iPad stuffed into the fascia feel that similar installations give you in some rivals, which is impressive given that the 12.3 inch TFT monitor used on models like this one featuring the Lexus premium navigation system is one of the very largest we've seen. Lesser variants get a smaller 8-inch display. This bigger display is controlled by a pillow-shaped remote touch mouse that unfortunately is much less intuitive to use than the simple circular dial you get with a rival BMW iDrive or Audi MMI infotainment setup. You get used to it though, and it is better than having to jab away at the touch screen in the way that you'd have to in a rival Jaguar F-Pace. As you'd expect, this Lexus's display deals with all the usual navigation, radio, media, Bluetooth phone and climate functions, plus it shows the selected settings of the drive mode select system. This is also the portal used to view the rear view camera. Its functionality expanded on this top model to include a 360 degree panoramic view monitor. Look about and there's good all-round visibility, aided not only by the commanding driving position and these large mirrors, but uh, also by the sleeker body shape's narrower window pillars that make it easier at junctions. The driving position is good too, perfectly positioning you in front of a lovely leather-stitched multifunction steering wheel. Through it, you view a pair of clearly defined dials, the left-hand one on RX450H variants being a hybrid indicator rather than a rev counter. Between these gauges, a TFT multi-information monitor has info, a compass, audio and safety system screens. We're not inclined to find fault with any of this. In fact, our only real issue with this cabin lies in Lexus's refusal to join the current and welcome trend for decluttered dashboards. The result is that there are a considerable number of buttons, some of them rather hidden. Uh, the switches for the heated seats behind the gear stick, for example. These lie next to an area that on most models allows you to wirelessly charge your smartphone, and that's technology that seems to make rather redundant the 12 volt socket that's also provided there. Uh, another nice touch lies with these adaptive cup holders in the centre console. Now, with these, on a day when you've uh, felt the need to supersize your morning Starbucks infusion, you have only to press on the floor of this receptacle to deepen it in a way that will accept a larger cup. As for other practicalities, well, they're also well thought through. There's a deep covered centre box between the seats uh, with two USB sockets and an aux in point. Uh, a coin cubby by your right knee, a glove box that's big enough to hold a tablet, overhead space for your sunglasses, and door bins that fold out to accept larger items. Even the leather pad you rest your palm against to operate the remote touch mouse turns out to be a smartphone compartment. Time to move to the rear seat and discover whether the size increases made to this fourth generation RX have cured one of this model line's long-standing shortcomings, a lack of rear cabin space. Well, to some extent, the answer is yes, not only because the 60mm wheelbase increase has freed up more legroom, but also due to the fact that Lexus has lowered the rear floor section. Now, how their engineers achieved that feat, we're not quite sure 
given that this bench sits directly on top of the three battery packs that power the hybrid drive system. Still, if you are tall of build, you'll be glad of the extra roof height created, for otherwise, headroom would be at something of a premium here, especially on top models fitted with this panoramic glass sunroof. As a result of all this, Lexus claims to have created something of a limousine-like feel back here. Well, we wouldn't go quite that far, but it is a big improvement, with the leather stitch luxury embellished by the way that these seats slide and recline for greater long-distance comfort. Two people will be especially comfortable, optionally separated by a smart fold-out armrest, incorporating twin cup holders and a covered compartment. If you do need to take three adults, though, this hybrid model makes it easier than it would normally be in a car of this kind, thanks to the flat floor enabled by the hybrid mechanicals. Ah, yes, the hybrid mechanicals. You'd expect them to rather get in the way when attention turns to luggage space. So, let's see. Avoid entry-level trim and you get this static electricity-enabled hands-free boot opener. Approach the car laden down with baggage and a mere gesture with hand or elbow over the Lexus badge will activate the hatch. It's certainly more dignified than rival systems that require you to dance around waving your foot beneath the bumper. On the downside, though, the system is painfully slow to activate, which isn't ideal when it's raining and you've a stack of shopping to load in. Once everything is opened up, there's no real loading lip, so sliding objects in is easy enough. But the cargo floor is quite high, which could cause an issue if you've an aching back and the items in question are heavy. But I digress. I was going to tell you just how much of an impact the bulky hybrid system has on cargo capacity. Now in the event, it's not too serious. The luggage area in question is 453 litres in size and has been designed around the needs of this hybrid variant. And that means if you go for the more conventionally engined RX200T petrol turbo model, you still won't find it any bigger. Conventional diesel large luxury SUV rivals typically offer around 30% more space than this, but the room on offer here should be quite sufficient for the needs of most buyers, added to by this small concealed area beneath the boot floor. If you need more space, you'll be pleased to find that the centre part of the rear backrest splits separately so you can more easily transport longer items like skis. Uh, flatten the bench, and although the cargo area created isn't completely level, it is 924 litres in size. Around 90% of RX owners will want the 450H hybrid version that we've been trying here, broadly priced in the 47,000 to 60,000 pound bracket. All such petroelectric variants get the brand's E4 all-wheel drive system mated to belt-driven CVT auto transmission. For the few buyers believing that a lower upfront asking price is of more importance than very low ongoing running costs, Lexus this time around is also offering an RX200T petrol turbo version. Its standard automatic gearbox is a more conventional mechanical setup, operating either with two-wheel drive in the entry-level £40,000 S-Spec variant or with intelligent all-wheel drive in plusher derivatives that sit in the £46,000 to £50,000 bracket. On to the value proposition that RX range pricing represents. Our hybrid versions of this Lexus don't qualify for the government grant towards purchase that you might have heard about. That's there to encourage people to consider cleaner forms of electrically assisted motoring. But then we would point out that most of the SUV models in this segment that use more sophisticated plug-in hybrid technology also fail to qualify for that grant, either because they're too expensive or because they're not quite clean enough or both. We're thinking here of contenders like Volvo's XC90 T8 twin engine, uh, Audi's Q7 e-tron, uh, Porsche's Cayenne SE hybrid and the Mercedes GLE 500e. BMW's X5 xDrive 40e too, though that car has the redeeming quality of being priced more closely to Lexus levels at around £52,000. The other rivals I just mentioned all sit in the 60 to 65,000 pound bracket, a big step up from the cost of mainstream RX 450H models. And this Japanese SUV looks even better value compared to the only non-plug-in hybrid in the sector, the Range Rover Sport SDB6 hybrid diesel, which costs around 85,000 pounds. In other words, to afford this Lexus, you don't necessarily require either a lottery win or a promotion to the board. 
But what if you're not wedded to the idea of hybrid technology and in the position of many potential buyers? People simply considering the purchase of an RX 450H as an alternative to a conventional diesel-powered large SUV rival. Well, how did the Lexus stack up then? Well, pretty well, we think. Bear in mind that this RX only seats five, so it won't be attractive to family buyers wanting the seven-seat capacity of cars in this class like Volvo's XC90, Audi's Q7 or Land Rover's Discovery. Instead, the Lexus's layout is designed to compare against either cheaper alternatives in the class like the Jeep Grand Cherokee or the Volkswagen Touareg or slightly more expensive cars in the sector like conventional diesel versions of BMW's X5, Jaguar's F-Pace, uh, Porsche's Cayenne, Mercedes GLE or the Range Rover Sport. Opting for this hybrid RX 450h over such conventional diesel versions of any of the cars I've just mentioned will get you a large luxury SUV that's about 10 to 15 percent more frugal and more significantly uh, will be 30 to 50 percent cleaner in terms of CO2 emissions, which in turn will lead to even bigger benefiting kind tax savings for likely owners. And that is a tempting proposition. Finally, a word about the rare RX 200T derivative with its conventional 2-litre four-cylinder petrol turbo engine. Now, there's nothing else in the large SUV class with a petrol engine that small. So for rivals, you'd be looking at more compact premium badge SUVs of this kind, contenders that really more directly compare with Lexus's smaller NX 200T model. We're thinking here of cars like maybe an Audi Q5 2-litre TFSI or perhaps something comparably priced against an RX 200T like a Range Rover Evoque SI4. Either way, what you get really wouldn't be quite the same. In fact, you could argue that to be the case right across the RX lineup. At first glance, there's certainly plenty else that apparently competes. But begin to drill down into the detail and you start to find this car's proposition becoming more and more unique. If you agree, having made up your mind that this Lexus is really what you want, then you're going to need to know just how generous the brand has been with standard spec. Well, you shouldn't be disappointed. The least luxurious S lever spec only applies to the two-wheel drive RX 200T model that hardly any potential buyers will want, but even that car gets 18-inch alloy wheels and LED headlamps with automatic high beam. LED technology also features with the daytime running lights, the front fog lamps and the rear light clusters. Plus, there are power folding heated mirrors, uh, auto headlamps and wipers, front and rear parking sensors, an alarm, rear privacy glass and the proper space saver spare wheel that some rivals make you do without. Inside, all RX models come with dual zone climate control, LED interior lighting and a four mode version of the drive mode select system that allows you to tweak throttle response, steering feel and gear shift timings to suit the way you want to drive. There's also a smart entry and start system, cruise control, a leather-stitched multifunction steering wheel, powered and heated seats, and an auto-dimming rear-view mirror. Infotainment on affordable models is taken care of by an 8-inch Lexus media display that gives you navigation, a rear parking camera, Bluetooth phone compatibility, and a 9-speaker DAB audio system. That's all included with two-wheel drive RX 200T motoring, but as I suggested earlier, most potential buyers won't be looking at that entry-level conventional petrol variant. So let's assume that, like most potential RX customers, you want this RX 450H hybrid model. With petrol electric power, the base trim level is SE, which gets you everything I've just mentioned, plus leather seats that are ventilated with cooled air up front for those sticky summer days. Ideally, though, you'll be wanting to graduate at least to one of the mid-range models, targeting either the plush luxury level or the more dynamic-looking F-Sport grade. In either case, beneath the bonnet, there's a choice of either hybrid power or that 200T petrol turbo engine, featuring four-wheel drive in both cases. Equipment highlights at luxury level include the Lexus Premium Navigation System with its larger 12.3-inch TFT Central Dash infotainment screen, remote touch touchpad, a DVD player and connected services media connectivity. At luxury level, you also get roof rails and larger 20-inch wheels, plus some of the clever RX touches. Things like the smartphone wireless charger and the gesture-controlled powered tailgate. 
RX F Sport buyers get all of this, plus a sportier look inside and out, along with extra Sport S modes on the drive mode select system and adaptive variable suspension that automatically tweaks ride quality to suit the road you're on. The car we're testing here is the top Premier version, which, as you might expect, really does include almost everything you can want. Outside, the alloy wheels have optional coloured inserts, there's a huge panoramic glass roof, and the LED headlamps have an adaptive high beam system that'll never dazzle oncoming motorists. Inside, there's beautiful etched dark wood trim panelling, a heated wood trim steering wheel, a colour head-up display, and 10-way power-adjustable front seats clad in higher quality, super soft semi aniline leather. That big central infotainment screen comes alive too at premier level with a thumping 15 speaker Mark Levinson surround sound system and a 360 degree panoramic view monitor. On to options. Well, there's plenty of style stuff. Various extra chromed exterior features and illuminated scuff plates, for example. Plus various SUV packs if, rather ill-advisedly, you want to make your RX a little more rugged. For the inside, there's a Lexus hotspot package that gives you in-car internet access, turning your car into a Wi-Fi hotspot. This option will work well with the various entertainment packs that are there to keep rear seat passengers occupied, uh, ranging from holders onto which you can clip iPads all the way up to a fully fledged system with a DVD player, headphones and two 7-inch screens. That's certainly tempting, but first we would want to tick a few extra cost practicality boxes, specifically maybe the one for the protection pack, which includes mud flaps, uh, floor mats, a rear bumper protection plate, a boot liner and luggage area cargo nets. All these items are available separately, plus you can also get a dog guard, a towing pack, side mouldings, door edge protectors and the usual roof boxes and racks for things like bicycles, skis and snowboards. On to safety, which is well covered, whichever model you choose. As you'd expect, you get the usual electronic assistance for braking, traction and stability control, all coordinated as usual in a Lexus by the brand's clever Vehicle Dynamics Integrated Management System. There's also uh, tyre pressure monitoring, an energy absorbing bonnet and bumper, anti-whiplash head restraints, an emergency brake signal for panic stops, hill start assist control and ISOFIX child seat mountings. Plus, if the worst does come to the worst, every RX comes with no fewer than 10 airbags. As well as the usual twin front side and curtain bags, these include a driver's knee bag and, more unusually, a front passenger cushion airbag and rear side and curtain bags for backseat occupants. There's a full suite of electronic safety items too, thanks to the standard inclusion of the Lexus Safety System Plus, a multi-feature integrated package. As part of this, a pre-crash safety system scans the road ahead for potential accident hazards. If one's detected, you'll be warned. The pre-crash seatbelt pretensioners will be armed and pre-crash brake assist to supplement the braking effort will be activated. If you don't respond or you aren't able to, then the system will automatically apply braking to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Other Safety System Plus features include lane departure warning and lane keep assist to stop dozy drivers from veering out of their lanes on the highway, a sway warning function that detects vehicle sway caused by driver drowsiness and prompts you to stop and take a break, automatic high beam headlights that automatically dip themselves at night in the face of oncoming traffic, uh, traffic sign recognition that pitches road signs as you pass them and then displays them onto the dash, and adaptive cruise control that uses a radar to automatically keep you a safe distance behind the car in front at low speeds as well as high ones. If you do want to go further in terms of safety features in this car, then you'll have to get yourself this top Premier version, which also includes a blind spot monitor to stop you from dangerously pulling out to overtake, and a rear cross traffic alert system that warns you of approaching traffic when you're reversing out of a space. Plus, at Premier level, you also get the anti-dazzle adaptive high beam LED headlamps that I mentioned earlier.
Lexus's decision not to adopt plug-in technology for this fourth generation RX model's hybrid engine is an interesting one. And slightly ironic given that parent company Toyota were the first to develop plug-in hybrid engines for automotive use. This engineering hasn't been made available to RX customers because, Lexus believes, at least for the time being, that plug-in premium pricing doesn't deliver enough in terms of real-world benefits. Volvo and rival German brands would beg to differ on that issue, pointing out that the lithium-ion batteries of fully charged plug-in hybrids deliver around 25 miles of all-electric motoring, as opposed to the very limited 1.2-mile range you get from the old-tech nickel-metal hydride batteries used in this RX450H. Lexus counters by saying that 25 miles is a hopelessly optimistic figure and that, anyway, many owners buy plug-in hybrid models for the tax benefits but then never plug them in. Now, since we'd agree with both perspectives, it's difficult to definitively guide you here. Ultimately, this is more of a tax issue than an automotive one. It really comes down to whether, as a potential buy in the large luxury SUV segment, you're prepared to pay a significant amount more for plug-in hybrid technology that, quite legally, artificially distorts the official new European driving cycle figures to produce lower quoted fuel and CO2 readings, which will then reduce your tax bill. Rival plug-in models like Volvo's XC90 T8 twin engine and Audi's Q7 e-tron do this by starting the NEDC testing procedure fully charged, which is why the stats state that they can somehow deliver under 50 grams per kilometre of CO2 and over 130 miles per gallon on the combined cycle. In contrast, a base SE spec RX450H manages 54.3 miles per gallon on the combined cycle and 120 grams per kilometre of CO2, figures that deteriorate slightly to 51.4 miles per gallon and 127 grams per kilometre if you choose one of the plusher models with the larger 20-inch wheels. Now, if you read the statistics like that, you'd think that the running cost of an RX450H would be way behind those of such plug-in hybrid rivals. The reality, though, is, we suspect, rather different. Most owners of hybrid SUVs cover more miles on their engines than on their batteries, in which case we think that your real-world returns would probably end up being pretty similar, whatever form of hybrid technology you prefer. And the returns in question are, in their way, pretty impressive here. Just how does a 2.1-tonne, 308-brake horsepower, 3.5-litre RX450H cost less to run than a 1.2-tonne, 104-brake horsepower, 1.6-litre petrol-powered Ford Focus? Answers on a postcard, please. More importantly, this car will be significantly cheaper to run than the kind of comparably priced conventional diesel-powered large luxury SUV model you might previously have been considering if you're shopping in this segment. Maybe not so much in terms of combined cycle fuel economy, although an RX450H should typically deliver you between 5 to 10 more miles out of every gallon in this regard. More in terms of the all-important CO2 reading your tax ban will depend upon. Thinking of conventional diesel-powered models in this segment, like BMW's X5 xDrive 30D, uh, Land Rover's Discovery, Audi's Q7 3.0-litre TDI, Volvo's XC90 D5 or Mercedes GLE, well then think in terms of a CO2 reading at least 35 to 40 grams per kilometre dirtier, and that'll translate into higher benefit and kind tax payments that by our calculations will cost you anything between 1100 and just over £3,000 more per per year, depending on the competitor you're looking at. For the record, an RX450H gets a 21% BIK rating in base SE guys, or 22% if you go for a plusher trim level. All of that is thanks to clean emissions, though of course, during much of your urban motoring in an RX450H, say when you're inching along in traffic with the engine seamlessly disabled, the EV mode activated, and battery power in motion, you won't be emitting any emissions at all. Plus, it helps in this respect that cold weather operational efficiency has been improved over earlier versions. That means that whereas previously a chilly morning might have seen the drive unit default straight into the petrol engine on startup, now it's more likely to revert to the preferable electric mode as you glide out silently into the traffic, perhaps monitoring the hybrid system's cleverness on the energy display that you'll find on the centre console monitor. 
The same display will also give you graphical trip info and past record screens so you can gauge your ongoing success in fuel economy and energy regeneration. At higher speeds, you'll need to bear in mind that the quoted fuel figures are even more heavily dependent than normal on the driver assuming a significant degree of restraint. Certainly, to get anywhere near the 50 miles per gallon mark in day-to-day -day use with this Lexus, you'll need to keep the car locked into the drive mode select system's eco mode, which moderates uh, throttle response and the engine power output uh, whilst tweaking the climate control. Plus, you'll also need to keep one very careful eye on the hybrid system indicator that replaces the usual rev counter on the dash, making sure that the needle stays as often as possible in either of the blue eco or charge zones. Of course, overall efficiency figures will look very different if you're one of the few potential buyers looking at the 2-litre petrol turbo RX200T model. To be fair, Lexus has done its best to maximise what's possible from this engine, incorporating an ESTEC, that's Economy with Superior Thermal Efficient Combustion System, all unfortunately to very little effect. Despite the fact that this variant produces around 25% less power than the RX450H hybrid, its running cost returns are much worse, even if you order it with two-wheel drive. In this form, the combined cycle fuel economy figure is 36.2 miles per gallon, while the CO2 figure is 181 grams per kilometre. Go for this derivative in the kind of plusher trim grade that'll give you four-wheel drive and larger wheels, and those figures fall slightly to 34.9 miles per gallon and 189 grams per kilometre. What else? Uh, well, owners no longer qualify for free congestion charging, but it is some consolation to learn that with hybrid RX models, residual values look pretty healthy, at least as good as those of the posh Teutonic brands. Remember too, when considering depreciation, that an RX is better equipped than many of its German rivals. To match this car's spec, you would have to spend extra cash on options with those cars, uh, money that you would be unlikely to get back again at resale time. Where Lexus could do better is in the warranty it provides. Although there's a five-year package to cover the hybrid engine, every other part of the RX must be covered by an unremarkable three-year, 60,000-mile deal that doesn't seem overly generous in this day and age, particularly since parent company Toyota offers five-year cover on its models. You can, of course, pay extra to extend this cover, but in our view, you really shouldn't have to. But does that matter? This is, after all, a Lexus, a car in which market experience suggests virtually nothing is ever likely to go wrong. The facts are that hybrid technology generates fewer warranty claims than conventional petrol or diesel engines do. And if something ever should happen, so charming and helpful are the award-winning dealers in the network that you may end up almost being glad that it did. And that's just as well, given that you're going to be visiting them relatively often for routine maintenance. Uh, servicing intervals are every 10,000 miles for both engines, and that's a little more frequent than we'd like, although a prepaid servicing plan can help keep costs in check. Insurance groupings are pitched at Group 40 for the two-wheel drive RX200 TS and Group 41 for the plusher four-wheel drive versions. For this RX450H hybrid, the groupings start at 44 for the mainstream SE, luxury and S-Sport variants uh, rising to Group 45 for this top Premier model. Hybrid power may no longer be a unique selling point for this RX, but affordable hybrid power still is. If you want to run a large luxury SUV without getting pummeled by the taxman, then this is the kind of engine you have to have. And if you want this technology without inflated pricing in this segment, then this is the car you have to have. Is it really as simple as that? Oh, possibly. The plug-in hybrid containers you can get in this class are mostly too expensive to properly compete with more conventional diesel models. In hybrid form, this RX isn't. So with the 450h version of this Lexus, you can enjoy significant tax benefits without a pricey plug-in premium. The appeal is obvious. But is the car itself an equally attractive proposition? Well, it's certainly a much improved product primarily to look at, but also in terms of luxury, safety and technology. And offering the alternative of conventional turbo petrol power also gives this model line an important extra option. 
Less telling, we think, have been the handling changes Lexus claims to have made. The car itself remains an SUV for the Riviera rather than the racetrack. For most potential buyers, though, that's as it should be. As one writer observed, the RX replaces dynamism with the calming aura of whale music and scented candles. There is something in that. We still like it, though. Forget what the magazines tell you. Buyers in search of a large luxury SUV typically prioritise luxury, style and tax-friendly efficiency above almost everything else. These elements being things that this Lexus can now nail more effectively than ever before. According to the brand, it's all about sharpened sophistication and seductive strength. We would prefer simply to call this a more sensible way to own what remains a very indulgent kind of car.